Hello everybody, my name is Lee Roadham with Shop Saver CNC. Around here they call me Roadie. Today we're going to go over the last part of the Live Edge epoxy table. We're going to cut the base. What we're going to cut it out of is plate steel, square tubing, rectangle tubing, and round tubing. For this live edge table project, we had to come up with a base or a frame. We decided to go with a rugged, industrial look. That generated an X-style support with a heavy-duty tie bar link. We're going to use N-Route and Pro-Nest for the design work and the Sidekick 4 to cut it. Now that we're at the computer and I already have N-Route open, you can see here I have a 2D model of the base. We have a top side and end view. But what I want to really show you is these two parts right here. This part is the top and the bottom plate. This part is the end plate for the rectangle tubing. Now, as you can see that we have radius corners and scallop center on the top and bottom plate, and then we have radius corners also on the rectangle plate that goes on the, the rectangle tube. So, how do we get that? Well, let me show you how easy this is. We're gonna pull this in. I've already got some guidelines already snapped in on our workspace. Let's go ahead and use the rectangle draw tool. We're going to go ahead and do a rectangle, highlight it, apply it, and close it. Now we're not concerned about size because I'm just showing you how to do the radiuses. We're going to go right here to the add fillet to contours. We're going to go left click, left click, apply. So if we want to change the radius, we can go to a one two five or an eighth inch radius. All we have to do is left click, left click, and apply. And you can see that there's two different size radiuses there. So let's close that out. Let's talk about exporting these parts. We want to do them individually. I've already exported the top and bottom plate, so I want to go ahead and just export the end rectangle plate. So it's as simple as highlighting, left click and drag, come up here to file, export, it's going to come up with a box. Now you can choose the file that you want to take it to, so we're going to use a triple A because it's easy to find. Here you can already see I have the end plate in there. You would normally type in the file name here and then you would go ahead and save it. Now, if you've made a correction or some type of change and you're just going ahead and saving it again, it'll come up with the confirm as box. It'll ask you if you want to the change, make the changes you're going to go ahead and say yes. The next box comes up is the AutoCAD export option. In some cases you want to export the whole file, but in this particular case we only want to do the selected item. So we're going to go ahead and we would left click here and press OK. That DXF or DWG is already exported. Let's go over to ProNest and see how that's done. Now we come up here to file and we're going to go to new. We want to enter a job, so we're going to say Live Edge Table. Then we're going to select a material. Well, in our case, we're going to be using quarter inch mild steel A36. You would go to the drop down and you would find the appropriate material, which is already in there. And we're going to now take and we're going to select what the amperage is we're going to be using. So we're going to go ahead and click down and you can see that we're going to be using the 65 amps shielded air. Also, you're already preset for the PowerMax 85. That's what we're going to be using. So we're good to go. We can go ahead and create that. Do you want to save this job? Yes. So now that box is going to come up and we want to save it as it's going along. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put LET and we're going to save it. And we will replace this one. We're waiting for it. We're going to go up here to the edit part list. We're going to open that up and we're gonna place that in. Double click puts a tool path on it immediately. Now you'll notice here on the top plate, for a quantity, we're gonna need four of those. So we're gonna put four in a quantity, and then we're gonna come up here to the end plate and we're gonna add that. If you click it one time with the left mouse button, you're only gonna get a preview in the preview button. 
If you double click it, the tool path comes on. So we're gonna make sure that that's highlighted, advanced edit, and that brings our next box up. Entity, modified leads, and now just at a left click, we can modify it anywhere we want to. By left click and hold, you can modify the arc, drag it around and do multiple things. Or you can come here to the right, it allow you to come to a drop down box. Let's say we want to go to a linear. We're going to go to linear, okay, apply, and you can see that the lead in went to a linear. Now you can do the same with the lead out. There we go. Okay, apply, and voila, there it is. Lead in, laid out is now a linear. And save this. Now, let's go ahead and nest this. We're gonna come up here to the right, return to nest, and you can see that the parts are already added. But wait a minute, we need to go ahead and, and change this. We didn't add in how many we needed. So we need two of those end plates. So we're gonna come back in here, enter two, return to nest, and now you can see that. We've got a default of 96 by 48 plate. It's as simple as hitting auto nest, and there we have it. Now to output it, it's as simple as coming up to output, coming down, making sure that this is correct, and output. Yes, we want to replace it, and we can close it. Now let's go down to the machine. So this is where the fun begins. We get to cut some parts. We're gonna load some quarter inch plate and we're gonna cut the top and the bottom plate and the end plate. Now that we're done cutting, you notice I've got the top and bottom plates done and the end plate for the rectangle tubing. You'll note the nice clean radius corners on the four edges and then we have scalloped the center for weight and for a little character. We chose to go with this also, this radius, because it's a lot harder to do a lead in and lead out and you can see that these are nice and clean. The end plate has nice clean radiuses and is going to fit beautifully on the rectangle tubing. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to load the machine up, we're going to get some two inch pipe on the fourth axis. So now that we're done cutting with the fourth axis, the two inch pipe, I want to mention that this is designed to either A, sit in the bottom of the tank, or we can clamp it to the side of the machine. Very versatile. I got to cut square tubing, but I'm on a tight deadline to get this project done. 
So, when you got a saw like this, why wouldn't you use it? In a future episode, I'm gonna show you how to cut this on the fourth axis rotary tool. Now that we've got the fourth axis off the machine and everything's cleaned up, let's talk about rectangle tubing. We've got this two by eight piece of rectangle tubing, but the interesting thing is, is it's 64 inches long. The Sidekick 4 is only 48 by 48 inches on a work envelope. Well, we're gonna use a little friend. We can't afford to scrap this out because steel prices are, are up right now. Well, we only have one piece. That one piece, this is all I have to work with. I can't scrap it. So we're gonna use the super pen to avoid that from happening. We're gonna do a layout with it, and we're gonna get some reference points, and we're gonna shift this thing around, back and forth. Once we do that, we're gonna run it dry, make sure everything's good to go, then we're gonna go into the plasma cut. I want you to note, this is the super pen, a marker goes up inside of it. It's a valuable tool to keep you from wasting money. Now that we're finished cutting, you got to see how we incorporated the super pen and the torch to pull this off. You see that all the edges, radiuses, lead ins and lead outs are absolutely beautiful. In this area right here, you may have noticed in the video that the heat caused it to move. The torch height control worked phenomenal. You watched it react very quickly and set the torch height. Now, I could weld this up. But why would I? 
I've got a great welding team out on the floor there that I'm going to hand this off to and have them weld it up. We just got this back from Weld, and quite frankly, wow. The fit and finish is beautiful. You can see how all the incorporated processes we did help to contribute to the end product. We have rounded edges for safety. The pipes fit beautifully. End caps are beautiful. Edge finish, awesome. This is going to complement the top that Bob and Sean made beautifully. We're gonna send this base over to paint. They're gonna finish it up. Bob and Sean are gonna take it from there and they're gonna show you the finished product. And with that, my name is Lee Roadhamel. If you have any further comments or questions, contact ShopSaber.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram.